Hi Robert, welcome back. Thanks Sharon, great to be back. We're going to talk about something that we're both passionate about today, and that's healing. Um, and when we're talking about healing, talking about how our emotions affect our body, and how body work affects our body, and how we have to integrate all of it to actually have true healing occur, especially when we're looking at emotions. So I'd love for you, you've been in the industry for a very long time and I know that you work with many different types of healing modalities. So I'm wondering whether you can tell us about how some of your modalities, how do you work with your clients? Okay. And what's the reasoning behind the work that you do? All right, great. So yeah, the, um, as always, great to see you and thanks for having me back on. Um, I'm very passionate about healing because in my own life, I've had a lot of issues to overcome in my family of origin and things that have happened to me along the way. And like most people, um, I've had challenges and a certain sense of overwhelm, um, challenge to sometimes stay really present and grounded, and trying to get that balance between doing and being, mm -hmm. and have it become one. So. And, and also feelings of inadequacy, of, of um, you know, being brought up in very strict Catholicism where you're a sinner mm -hmm. and you're a bad person and, and natural impulses are thwarted and shamed and all that. So these are all have been challenges and things that I've worked on for many, many years. And this is why emotional healing has been a lifesaver for me and also is my catalyst for doing the work that I've been doing the last almost 27 years. Mm -hmm. So, yes, emotions are really, really critical. And I think, honestly, Sharon, that uh, you know, healing is a process and not an event. Mm -hmm. and it's, it, there's many layers to it. And healing is a process that requires grieving. And sometimes people can get stuck in sadness and confuse that with grieving mm -hmm. because Underneath that sadness, there's this perpetual feeling that, you know, I'm overwhelmed, I can't overcome this, it's all too much. So underneath that is the feeling of shame. Uh, being shamed of being flawed and defective and that you're, you know, essentially not good enough. And so in order to get beyond that, that stuck sad, I wouldn't necessarily call it depression, although it could be, but it's kind of a feeling of despair. And uh, I remember John Bradshaw saying once that uh, sadness plus shame equals despair. And I can often meet, meet people in that state where there's, there's a just a listlessness. They're not necessarily exhausted, although they could be, and they're not severely depressed, like they be cl they're not like clinically depressed. They just don't have the inspiration to jump out of bed in the morning. Mm -hmm. So there's something that they've cut off from. And I think the body has a lot to do with it. So one of the primary ways that I help people is to first do a psychodynamic. Now, what does that mean? It simply means connecting the way in which a person feels stuck in their present time life with the actual cause. So it's often the family of origin. It could be a traumatic relationship or it could be something traumatic that happened in adolescence, but it's often younger. And what I find is that by doing the, that psychodynamic, by linking the present time feeling of my life isn't moving forward the way I want it to, with the past, the stronger that link, Sharon, the deeper the energetic work goes and the more the person can release and have closure with the past so they can build their own container and to move forward. So I think this is really, really important. Mm -hmm. So whether it's something that's psychosomatic, meaning that there's a physical health problem, the person is in pain, uh, or you know the person has some chronic illness whose um, origins are in the mind, you know, are stuck in the body somewhere, uh, we can deal with it. Or if it's if it's uh, it tends to be a mental health problem like depression, like low energy, um, and uh, a lot of sadness or grief from the past, is that 
by doing the energy work after the psychodynamic, it goes much deeper and there's a, there's a lasting relief. It doesn't mean it couldn't reoccur in the future, there could be another layer of it, but what we want is people to be free so they can live with passion and live with presence and get real clarity on their purpose. Now, one of the teachers that I've had, uh, you know, through various others, um, was Wilhelm Reich. He was an Austrian psychiatrist, and it, it's known throughout the world as, as uh, Reichian therapy, and has a lot to do with the character, how the character becomes embedded in the body. And what Reich believed, one of, the, one of his many theories, is that we have chronic muscular tensions in different parts of the body, and we hold things there. For example, uh, many people have issues with control. They don't trust that life will unfold the way they want it to. And they have a lot of problems with their neck, a lot of stiffness or pain that's chronic. Mm -hmm. And some people have it through their whole life, and they may go get a massage, or they may go to a Cairo, and they'll get temporary relief, but it comes back. Mm -hmm. Because they're not dealing with the real cause. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, can I tell you, I started out 20 years ago as a massage therapist, and that was one of the reasons why I started to work with energy and I went on from doing massage to Reiki and then I realized that it wasn't just that but I was starting to talk to my clients about the issues that they had and I realized that it was beliefs and emotions that were stuck in the body that were causing the physical symptoms. Now this was 20 years ago and it wasn't that well known back then but you know I, I used to see these MAC clients time and time again and I'd fix them for the week and they feel oh that's really good come back with the next week or two weeks later with the same problem. Exactly. And it was only when I sort of linked these are emotional, they're talking to me now about their emotional problems and um, I did some reading around that and it, it was amazing when I started working with their emotions their physical symptoms disappeared. Wow, yeah. Um, it's exciting, isn't it? Yeah, it really is. Yeah. It, it, it's a wonderful feeling of uh, service mm -hmm. when the, the healer or the therapist uh, can really reach that emotional part to help people have physical relief. Mm -hmm. um, one of the other areas, Sharon, that I think is really important uh, is the jaws. Because sometimes we need to be determined in life and to overcome a certain hardship or obstacle. So, relaxing now. <laughs> so we'll have, we'll have the set jaw um, and sometimes you need that. But then sometimes we get, it gets stuck in righteousness where we're holding on to this, I'm right and you're wrong, and it can be, it can hold a lot of anger mm -hmm. for, for people sometimes. And uh, it, it's not good because once you become too attached to your viewpoint, to your opinion, then you find yourself defending it. And then, you know, it, what might be true now might not be true two years from now mm -hmm. because we're constantly growing and shifting. But if you're holding on to that determined jaw, that set jaw, mm -hmm. Um, you can find yourself being really angry at yourself. So sometimes a massage to go in there or you know, move the jaws around and make sound um, to, get the, to, to get that energy released, to discharge it, where those chronic muscular tensions can hold you in a place, in a stuck place, and unable to forgive, unable to forgive yourself, unable to forgive certain dynamics or situations that may have really deeply hurt you. Uh, you know, because we can't live in the past. We've got to let go, we've got to resolve it, and we've got to move on. So I think that's, it's not the only place that a person could hold anger or rage, but it, to me it's one of the more common ones. Mm -hmm. And so by starting with the head, really, and the neck, you can free up a lot of energy that can stream through the body to be used instantly toward creativity, toward passion, toward, you know, lovemaking, uh, toward being more creative in your in the workplace and in your business, and so I think it's really exciting uh, when I'm able to help a person uh, release that and free that. And then, uh, although it's layered, it can release something that's chronic, mm -hmm. that's really keeping a person stuck and and you know not really loving themselves. Yeah, well you can see that as well when somebody's angry, they quite often go red here, and the energy just gets stuck, and they don't know what to do with it, don't you? So that's right. With, with lots of emotions like that, you can really see where the energy gets stuck as well. Yeah. Um, I also want to talk to you a little bit about the voice dialogue, dialogue work oh, yeah. that you do as well. Yeah. Because that really helps to get rid of emotions as well, doesn't it? It does, yes. So um, the voice dialogue is beautiful work um, 
from Hal and Sidra Stone, and uh, they were, it comes out of Gestalt, they were Gestalt therapists, and I, I was fortunate enough to train with them many, many years ago, and um, there is a lot to it, but just uh, for the viewers, just a little tip is that we have a primary self, so you might say that, that it's, it's uh, the ego mind, and you, you, you stand up and you walk around, and that, you let, let that person to say, look, you know, look what everybody's done to me. You know, poor little Robert, look what, you know, people have hurt me or taken advantage of me or, you know, I give so much. So it's really a stuck place that the ego is looking for the cause of all the problems outside the self. And many times that place becomes so set in a defense pattern that we, we disown our vulnerability. And that is probably the major key to voice dialogue. So I could sit here in my, in my aware ego, it's like the orchestra leader. I'm talking to you from the orchestra leader. Then my primary self, the one that wants to defend and be right and make others wrong and all that. Though in other words, the part that doesn't want to grow. Mm. <laughs> um, and we all have that within of us. Of course, I mean, of we're course, yeah. Human and yeah. It's about recognizing, I think, the very first thing, one of the things I say is becoming aware is the first thing. Once you're aware of that, then you can change it or help it grow. You can make new choices. But we've all got those parts of it. We us. all have that. Yeah. It's, it's the ego personality. And it wants to be harmless, wants to be right. And then, of course, if I'm right, then someone else has to be wrong. Mm -hmm. But anyway, the, the, the thing about it is to externalize and let that ego mind blame, 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 be a victim, be righteous. You know, everyone's out to get poor little me, I'm innocent. And so you talk that out, and then you sit back down. And you just observe it. And that's how you differentiate from it. And it's very powerful. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, that's step one. Externalize and differentiate the ego mind. Um, in voice, voice dialogue, they call it the primary self. In other words, the, the, the part of the personality that leads and how you interact with other people. Now, once you do that, you can sit perhaps in another chair and that could be called your disowned vulnerability. And then the, the vulnerable part is the part that feels deeply. This is where you access emotional energy and pain and where you're really brutally honest with yourself about, yes, a certain person did hurt me, but I was 50% of it. Mm -hmm. I hurt that person too. And I'm not innocent. And then the grief can come up, and the emotional pain can come up when you open that doorway of vulnerability. And that vulnerability is one of the keys to healing. What blocks it? Well, one of the things is what we've been talking about is the Reichian chronic muscular tensions. Mm -hmm. Because we build up a defense, and the defense wants to be uh, bulletproof. It wants to be safe. And so this way, we stuff down the emotional life, especially the vulnerability, as you were talking about. Uh, we eventually numb out, and we disconnect from our innermost self. It's not good. It's not good. And so it, what it does, it reinforces the primary self, or the ego structure, or the defense, and it pushes down more the unresolved emotional pain, the negativity, the shadow, you might call it. So by by, um, by owning that, that vulnerability and letting it come, the emotions can start to flow. Then when you come back and you can say to that vulnerability, I'm sorry, I disown you. I, I really need my vulnerability to be fully human, to really understand Robert, to really have an inner life, to connect with my deepest feelings means I connect with my heart and I know myself better. So one of the beautiful things about voice dialogue, Sharon, I think, is that you know it helps to learn it from a skilled voice dialogue therapist. Mm -hmm. But once you learn it, the steps, you can do it by yourself. Mm -hmm. And another thing, too, is that um, it's, it's never good for couples to do therapy on each other. It can get very messy mm -hmm. and complicated, as you know. But they can do voice dialogue with each other because they can talk about the different parts of their personality with no judgment. Mm -hmm. In other words, when you do voice dialogue, you're not trying to get rid of the primary self. It's impossible. Mm -hmm. 
you're not trying to have the vulnerability replace that. It's just a different part of the orchestra of you. But you're trying to understand yourself and what's going on there. So you can integrate all of your subpersonalities into the present moment. And by doing that, you become more human. You become less judgmental. You become more present and, and less stuck in the negativity, having unconscious pain kind of pull you away from the moment and distract you where you get involved in conversations that could be negative or uh, you know, gossiping and, and things like this that never help never helps us with our dream and you know, all the amazing things that we want to do when we get stuck in that place. And that's, to me, that's the, the beauty of uh, voice dialogue. Mm -hmm. Thank you. That's um, explained it really, really in depth, and it's great. Um, out of all of the therapies that you do before we, we finish, what's your favorite ones I have done for you? Um, I love the having a really good deep tissue body worker go into all the areas where I'm holding myself in a defense. So I can, it does several things. It, first of all, it frees up a lot of chi, a lot of energy that I can use toward loving myself and loving others and creativity. It gets energy flowing through the body. And so, you know, I think that's, um, it, it, it's of paramount importance. The problem is, people can sometimes confuse that with uh, a relaxing massage, which is nothing wrong with, with a lot of oil and all that. And, you know, it's very relaxing. You feel like, oh, I can just go to sleep for three hours now. And it's really good. Uh, I'm talking about more of healing the structure mm -hmm. of negativity that could be held in the body, and shadow materials, and negative emotions like anger and shame and guilt that we hold in certain chronic muscular tensions on either side of the spine, the jaws and the neck that I mentioned earlier. And if a person is willing to go through that, wow, miracles happen. So I've had probably 500 one-hour sessions in my lifetime, and I wish I could have another 500, because mm -hmm. I just feel so great and so free and so present. So that's probably my favorite, but as you know, um, I've trained in many different modalities, and i found a lot of them really beneficial. Mm -hmm. We don't have time now. No. To, to go into the others, but I, I think, yeah, I think that's just fantastic. Cool. Well, I think you're going to be demonstrating on me in another video yes. some of the techniques, so I'm looking forward to that as well. That'd you're very wonderful. welcome. I look forward to it. Thanks for having me again. It was, it was fun. So before you go, if anyone wants to find you, where, where will they find you? Um, yes, we have two uh, um, free courses. One is called uh, heartfelt Relationships, you can go on to relationships.robertkirby.com and uh, then we have a free uh, business course. It's called Ignite Yourself, Explode Your Business and that's under leadership.robertkirby.com and they're held in Sydney and uh, I also give my first coaching session or healing session for free so it's, I think it's important for viewers to know that. So up front uh, I let everybody experience uh, me and my, and my work and my team uh, for free, which is nice, mm -hmm. so they can get to know what we do and, and uh, see if they want to go further. And I must say, I've been on your courses and you give, over give, you know, you, you really, is it over, well, what's, what's the thing that you say? You over promise, over deliver? That's right. That's your thing. And, and it's 100% true, you give Thank so you. much of yourself. That's, so. that's what my heart is in service of. Yeah. Uh, Thanks so much. You're welcome. See you next time. It was time. fun. Thanks, Sharon.